Bourbon, <laughs> neat, no ice, no water. I never drink water. Dick Cheney tortures people with it. <laughs> Gives it an awkward aftertaste. <laughs> when, uh, midgets. <laughs> Play miniature golf. Do they know? I'm not French, no brag, just fact. French people get all excited about the comedian Jerry Lewis, not me. Jerry Lewis, year after year, was out raising money for muscular dystrophy. I, for some years now, have been quite opposed to muscular dystrophy. I think the man's just mean. At Nantes, he used to raise money for syphilis. Thought that was entirely unnecessary. It's a new study out. High school students, quarter of our high school students in the United States cannot find France on a map. I want to reassure you young people that finding France on a map is not an important life skill. <laughs> I myself have several times been to France and it has not once required me to find France on a map. I go to talk to the nice people at American Airlines and they find France for me. <laughs> It's entirely included in the ticket. <laughs> Service complete. I do get irritated when I'm on the plane and it takes some time. They have to explain to us, everyone in the plane, how to put the seatbelt on and how to take it off. Now think about this for a moment. We're all, hundreds of us, we're on a plane on a, at an airport. We all drove to the airport. In all 57 states, there's a legal requirement that you wear a seatbelt when you drive a car. And given that everybody made it from the car into the airplane, I don't know how long it took many of them, but, but they did get the seatbelt off on their way in. So anyway, they delay the flight, but we get to France eventually. And France, great, you know, Eiffel Tower, Champs-Élysées, good stuff, some drawbacks. It's full of French type people. <laughs> You're always banging, backing into that stupid bidet thing. You can trip over all the unused bars of soap. And there's no French toast anywhere. I do want to, I wish somebody had told me, but let me tell you, that bidet thing is not a sideways journal. <laughs> now we both know. And the problem is even your friends in France, they have this sort of superior attitude, right? France has high culture, like uh, opera and uh, ballet, and the United States has low culture, uh, like professional wrestling. And I'm a patriot, so I'm, I'm right in there. I go, what's the matter with professional wrestling? And they say, it's fixed. You know who's gonna win? And I said, let me get this straight. We are in the intermission of the ballet Cinderella. I am willing to bet you significant quantities of your oddly colored paper money that at the end of this ballet, the prince does not go home with one of the two ugly stepsisters. It's fixed. You know who's going to win. Shakespeare isn't any better. How many times have you seen Macbeth? Does he ever get to win? No, it's fixed. Does Othello ever say, you know, Desdemona, I'm sorry, I should have trusted you, let's go have makeup sex? No. Because it's fixed. Does Romeo ever go, let me sit down and think this through before I do anything rash? No. It's fixed. Now, if the World Wrestling Federation ran Shakespeare, sometimes Macbeth would win, and sometimes Macduff would win. And they'd look at the ratings and decide how to move from there. You go to France, and they want to drag you to these museums, okay? Now, when America, people come to visit us in America, we show them our new stuff, iPhone 5S, not the old five, not the old one. We hide the Blackberries so that they, nobody need to know. We don't drive them past the parts of town that have houses 70 years old. They see them, we go, well, somebody's gonna take that down and fix it. Oh, look, Trump Tower right here. New stuff. In France, they collect all the old stuff and put it in these shrines they call museums. And then they make the foreigners go look at it. And they get all excited about this, they really do. They go, go over, look at that. It's the Mona Lisa. 
So I'm looking at it. What does it do? <laughs> does it have any apps? <laughs> Is there like a controller? It just sits there. How sad for you. <laughs> so we're going through the Louvre, and I'm going pretty quick, you know. And they say, no, you have to slow down and appreciate each of the pieces of artwork here. And I say, and I explain slowly in English and loudly, because it helps. Um, <laughs> That in the United States, um, we, some people study the Evelyn Woods speed reading course, and so they can read novels in half an hour. I studied under her brother, Bubba Woods, the rapid art appreciation course. So I can go right down the paintings very quickly and pick up everything, all the deep meaning in these paintings. It, uh, there's an orange on a table. I got it. There's a guy missing an ear. Understood. There's a lady with unusually large thighs who cannot afford, evidently, culottes. Okay. <laughs> and I'm on to the next thing. Um, I've gotten to the point where I can do the Louvre in three hours if I have particularly comfortable shoes, two and a half. Okay. Um, now, there is one thing that I recommend to you that I find important because you're moving so fast, you don't want to hit the same room a second time. So when I fully appreciated a, a work of art, I leave a little thumbprint in the bottom right hand corner <laughs> so I don't get fooled into unnecessarily looking at it a second time to appreciate it. So when you go to France, buckle your seatbelt and use the other corner of the painting. Thank you. <laughs>